Hi, welcome back to Tony's tutorial. And today we have a biomechanics topic which is quite different from other topics. Today we are going to find out, do some calculations and find out what is the force that is transmitted through our hip joint. Earlier when we had studied the chapters like a glenohumeral joint, the elbow joint, the wrist complex etc. We did not do any calculations because why? What is the reason for that? I should ask you. What is the reason for that? It is because the weight of the body is transmitted not through that joint but through our hip complex. So hip complex has a unique peculiarity which is the weight transmission. And since it has that role, we have to find out the calculations which will help us to determine the force that is transmitted through the hip joint, the compression that the hip joint has to sustain in our bilateral stance like this, in unilateral stance when we lift our one leg or when we lean to one side like this or when we use a crutch or a crane etc. Cane, etc. So these are the different situations through which we will be traveling and finally arriving at a common conclusion. How beautifully our hip joint is created or designed to wear this stress and strain. But it is not a difficult topic. This is like a story and you can do it very easily. Just pay attention. So let us examine the force transmission through hip joint. Force transmission. Or joint compression at hip joint. Now, when a person is standing like this, the best way to illustrate this or imagine this is you just think that you are standing in front of a mirror or take this forward with you and go and stand in front of a mirror. You are standing in bilateral stance. You can feel that none of your muscles in and around the hip joint are active during this period. You can feel that moreover we have studied earlier that the muscles are inactive during this period. So there is no muscle activity. But there is something known as the line of gravity which starts from head to toe which is the action through which the line of gravity, gravity acts. That LOG line of the gravity passes slightly posterior to your hip joint. This is the line of the hip joint. It transmits slightly posterior to your hip joint. Since it passes slightly posterior, if it is passing anteriorly, it will produce a flexion moment because there is a tendency of body to go for the flexion. For example, now my line of the gravity is in this side. Okay, so what the tendency of the body will be to go to the side. Similarly, this line of the gravity is slightly transmitting through your back side, that is through X the posterior of the hip joint. Since it is passing through posterior, it can produce a slight extension. That is, it produce a gravitational extension moment. We call it as the term gravitational gravitational extension moment. Extension moment. So this line of the gravity that passes through the hip joint that is posterior to the hip joint, posterior to hip joint, produce a gravitational extension moment. That is, it can tilt our pelvis this side. That means it can produce which tilt in the pelvis? That is the posterior tilt in the pelvis. So it can produce a posterior tilt. But how is it maintained? We saw just before, when we are, when we are standing in front of the mirror, or when we were examining ourselves that the muscles are mostly inactive but uh, this gravitational moment is producing an extension but none of us are going backwards we are standing straight I am standing straight in front of you in my bilateral stance what is the reason for that the reason for that is the passive structures in the hip joint which is the capsule or ligamental structures we saw that the ligaments and the capsule is strongest in the anterior part of the hip so we correlate that point to this that is the capsule or ligamental structures it produce an extension but it has to be checked okay it has to be checked it do not produce a backward movement. 
that is with the help of or with the help of capsulo ligamentous structures capsulo ligamentous structures at the hip which includes your capsule and the ligament anterior capsulo ligamentous structures anterior capsule that is why we study hip joint capsule is weakest in the back side so hip joint ligament we only have one ligament that is the ischiofemoral ligament all the other ligaments are strong ligaments are in the anterior side so this anterior side works in such a way that you are standing straight like this that is the mechanism of human body that is a mechanism through which our hip joint is balanced so in our bilateral stance I want to give you the idea that our hip joint is balanced in bilateral stance. The reason for that is the action of capsulo ligamentous structures. The capsulo ligamentous structures balances our hip joint. The capsulo ligamentous structures balances our hip joint. Now we move on to calculation of force, calculation of few forces need not worry we'll do it in an easy manner as always see just imagine just imagine this is your hip right this is your hip if you can you can just draw with me then that would make you that would make it easy for you here you have your sacroiliac joint the sacrum you have here the tailbone finally and you can see the tailbone this is your let this be your sacrum so this is your ischium pubis, here you have the obturator foramen, here you have obturator foramen and here you have the head of the femur attached like this, okay, okay. You have the head of the femur attached like this. Yes, you have the head of the femur attached over here also like this. Let it be like this. Yes. Now imagine, okay, the body weight that is transmitted to your hip joint is known by a unique term which I had introduced earlier. That term is known as hat. That is the weight of head, arm and trunk. When you are standing like this, the weight of head, arm and trunk is passing through your hip joint. The weight of head, arm and trunk is 2 by 3rd of your body weight. It is actually 2 by 3rd of your body weight. Okay. Now, this weight is transmitted like this. This is going like this. Okay, that weight. But you know that you the two there are two hip joints, and the weight is transmitted to both the hip joints. Both the hip joints. Okay. Since it, there are right and left hip, this weight will equally be transmitted to each hip joint. So there is no advantage or disadvantage for any hip. When you are standing straight, half the weight of the hat will be transmitted to your right, half the weight of the hat will be transmitted to your left joint. That is simple to understand. The weight of the hat will be transmitted to right hip joint and weight will be transmitted through the left hip joint. This WR will always be equal to WL if it is a bilateral stance because the weight is transmitted equally to both the hip joints. Clear? So we have the weight that is transmitted is 2 by 3rd of the body weight which we call by the term HAT, hat. Okay? And in one of the hip joint, right side, we have what? half the HAT in half the HAT in left side we have half HAT as the weight that is transmitted shown by WR and shown by WEL okay that is so simple now we have studied earlier the perpendicular distance between the force is the shortest perpendicular distance is its momentum so this is the momentum of right side and this is the momentum of left side this is the middle point so this is ma denoted and this is ml can you predict what will be the value of ma and ml momentum right and momentum left it is equal because the distance between your middle the middle part of your body midline of your body to right and left hip is equal when you are standing in bilateral stance so w m a equal to m l so m a is equal to m a r equal to momentum of right is equal to momentum of left 
Now, if we calculate the torque, okay, the gravitational torque, adduction torque, it is producing an adduction, that adduction torque, we get it as what is the value in right side it is wr into mar in left side it is equal to wl into mal this wa is equal this is equal this is equal so the gravitational adduction foot foot torque that is transmitted through a right gravitational torque right will be equal to gravitational torque left gravitational torque right will be equal to gravitational torque left that is easy thing and but its direction will be opposite if its direction is together it can produce excessive compressive force in the joint but it is acting opposite to each other therefore that cancels each other so the point of discussion is over gravitational torque is not producing any compression or additional stress or strain in the hip joint in bilateral stance the only compressive force only force that is transmitted to your hip joint or my hip joint is the weight of head not the weight of hat, half the weight of hat in right limb and half the weight of the hat in left limb. Earlier we studied that what that uh, just before discussing this calculation, we did understand that that is a force transmitter. But now through the mathematical method, we derived at a conclusion that statement that we did earlier, did state earlier was true that the force that is the weight or the compressive force that is acting on your hip is just purely your body weight and that is why we saw that the capsule oligomentous structures could cancel it out the extension moment if this was excessive than this the capsule oligomentous structures won't be able to compete that they cannot fight with it you would have to recruit your muscles but we saw that there is no muscle activity clear that is what I want to tell you uh, that is when you are standing in a bilateral stance the both the weight that is transmitted through the head arm and trunk is equally distributed to your body when that force is equally distributed through your body to your right and left leg you can call it as wr and wl okay now the perpendicular distance between center of the body to these limbs to the head of the femur that is a hip joint okay is mal that is momentum left and momentum right now if we calculate the gravitational torque that is acting in this area we get it as w torque is equal to force into momentum the force is a weight that is acting on this area that is wr into mar w l into mal momentum left we find out that that both are having an equal value and but they are acting e opposite to each other so they cancel out they are not in our picture now thus we arrive at a conclusion that during bilateral stance there is no excessive or additional force that is acting through your hip joint it is just purely your body weight that is acting through your hip joint thus due to that, due to that your capsular ligamentous structures are sufficient and strong enough to provide a balance against the gravitational extension torque clear that is our point of discussion how the force is transmitted in bilateral stance and what is the mechanism that uh, of force transmission in bilateral stance okay that uh, was our point of discussion now you can alter this in many ways for example now uh, where we saw this condition we were standing in bilateral stance if i am standing with my one leg up see that there can be a force imbalance this is known as unilateral stance or single limb support this mechanism will get disturbed or when we are leaning to one side see my right hip is having more weight this side this, during this example or during this stance so the force transmit on the right won't be equal to left so it will not cancel each other this time my left will have more force than the right and that forces will not cancel each other see that is the mechanism through which we can alter this balance in bilateral stance clear and in bilateral stance 
this balance can be disturbed by the following examples and that examples we will see one by one one by one the first stage would be what happens in unilateral stem the changes that are going to happen in the unilateral stem if a person is going to stand unilaterally what all changes will happen in our body but before yes but before going to bilateral stance since this is a new concept and a bit difficult for you to understand let us summarize this once again what are the changes that are happening in bilateral stance so this will be bilateral itself so the first thing is that you can uh, note down like this in a point by point manner which will help you to understand in bilateral stance the line of gravity log passes posteriorly passes posteriorly to hip joint so that is the first thing that we should consider it produces a gravitational extension moment gravitational extension moment extension if it is passing anteriorly it will be producing flexion moment since it is passing posteriorly it is providing extension moment so nothing to worry on that okay this has to be balanced this has to be balanced right if this is not balanced we won't be able to stand in an equilibrium we have to stand in an equilibrium so this is actually a subjective plane analysis this is how the line of gravity passes behind the ear like this it passes passes and passes and anterior to posterior to the hip joint slightly in the middle of the knee joint and anterior to angle that is how it passes that you will study later no need to worry about that just remember now line of gravity star passes posterior to the hip joint this has to be balanced for equilibrium eh? for equilibrium but uh, like in uh, passive stabilization of hip uh, glenohumeral joint we find that muscles are inactive muscles are inactive so how this stability is provided it is provided by provided by anterior capsulo ligamentous structures anterior capsulo ligamentous structures see the anterior capsulo ligamentous structures provide or balances the gravitational extension moment they balance they hence balance the gravitational gravitational extension moment so they hence balance the gravitational extension moment thus in bilateral stance bilateral stance we have equilibrium equilibrium we can stand in bilateral stance in an equilibrium so this are the process first of all line of gravity passes posteriorly it produces a gravitational extension moment this has to be balanced for equilibrium the muscles are inactive we did the mg studies and we find out that muscles are inactive it should be provided the balance should be provided by anterior capsular ligament structures then hence the balance the gravitational extension moment and hence we have an equilibrium so this is actually a sagittal plane analysis sagittal plane analysis so before writing you can write out in sagittal plane in sagittal plane. so this is an important question as far as your syllabus is concerned so you should write down like this in sagittal plane or in sagittal plane analysis these are the changes that are going to happen okay now we have the coronal frontal plane analysis now we have the frontal plane analysis this is the sagittal plane analysis this is the frontal plane analysis or coronal plane analysis frontal plane in frontal plane analysis here is the role of here is where the role of muscles actually so the the role of forces and the torque actually comes in action so in frontal plane what happens the weight is transmitted to both the hip joint the weight is transmitted through sacroiliac joint weight is transmitted to through sc joint sacroiliac joint okay to the hip the weight is transmitted to the sacroiliac joint to the hip okay weight on weight is equal to h a t the weight that is transmitted is equal to h a t that is the head arm and trunk right the third one 
is the weight is equal to head arm and trunk it's 80 it's 80 is actually 2 by third of the body weight 2 by third of the body weight for example if person war weights 70 kg the HAT would be exactly speaking how many it would be 2 by third of the H70 kg now in each hip each hip HAT will be equally distributed will be equally distributed in each hip the HAT will be equally distributed since this weight on one hip is equal to weight on one hip is equal to half HAT weight on one hip is equal to half HAT right so the weight of this hip is equal to half HAT this hip is equal to half HAT now the moment arm of both the four weight that is W R is M A R W L is equal to M A L but since it is equally distributed from the body or at an equal distance W A L is M A L is equal to M A R and W R is equal to W L that is momentum is equal weight is, is also equal hence the torque is the protective force in the momentum that is uh, WER into MAR and torque on the left is equal to WL into MAL. And finally, we find out that WA. WR into MAR is equal to WL into MAL that is weight of the right side into momentum of the right side is equal to weight of the left side into momentum therefore torque net torque is equal to zero because they are acting opposite to each other this is acting positive this is acting negative or this is acting is that acting vex therefore the net torque is equal to zero therefore we can summarize in frontal plane these are the changes that is happening therefore we can summarize it as like this in bilateral stance in bilateral stance the compression the compression at hip is equal to in bilateral stance the compression at hip joint is equal to half HAT compression at each hip joint is equal to half HAT there is no other compressive force acting there is no other muscular force acting you know that when a muscle contracts for example when this muscle is contracting this is providing a compressive force inside that joint for example you have this and compressive force in your elbow joint this is added on by the action of muscles so net compressive force or total compressive force in a joint would be equal to compressive force by the weight plus compressive force by the muscular activity that will be the total compressive force so if you see the total compressive force in this joint the com compressive force by the mus weight is half HAT compressive force by the muscular force is equal to zero therefore it is equal to half HAT so always remember we have a concept like total joint compression that is the compression due to weight for example the total joint compression in your shoulder is compression due to your weight of the arm plus compression force due to the working of this muscle this muscles closely approximate the joints they do not distract the joint most of the muscles compresses the joint so they will exert a compressive force so compressive force in a joint is equal to total force total compressive force is equal to compressive force plus compressive force due to the body plus compressive force due to the muscular activity and before summarizing, I want to give you an example where you should write this example for the university examination. Uh, example is this. We have a person whose body weight is equal to 875 newton. 
we have a person whose body weight is equal to 875 newton we have converted into newton for all uh, uh, for making it easy for us for example that person's body weight is equal to 875 newton which is approximately 118 or 110 lb pound 110 pound means it is around 70 kg or 80 kg like that something like that okay so maybe a weight of a person like me that is 875 newton okay now the weight of heart is equal to 2 by third of the weight okay 2 by third of 875 is the weight of head arm and trunk which will come around 550 newton if you do this calculation you can find out so the total body weight is the w that is 875 uh, in that only 2 by third is the weight of the hat so 550 newton so the if I, for example if my weight is this 875 kg the weight or the compressive force that is acting on my both hip joint will be equal to 550 newton so two hip joints together it will be equal to 550 newton so in my right hip joint right hip what will be the force what will be the force 550 divided by 2 which is equal to 550 divided by 2 which is again half of the HIT the HIT is this which is half of that HIT is half of HIT which is equal to 275 newton which is equal to 275 newton so for a person like me my right leg will have a weight of 275 compressive force left leg will have a weight of 275 compressive force so first you have to write down all those sagittal plane uh, analysis frontal plane analysis and finally you should write down like this we have an imaginary example example for instance in that example take the weight of the body person is equal to us 875 newton uh, the weight of the hat head arm and trunk is 2 by third of the body weight thus it becomes 550 newton and half of that weight is transmitted to right hip and half to left hip so for right hip the half is equal to half hat which is 275 the same 275 is acting on the left hip so understand this in bilateral stance there is a force that is transmitting there is a weight that is causing the compression that force or that quantity is equal to your body weight is equal to half of your hat and in particular if it your right leg it is again half of your HAT and half of your HAT in your left leg there are no other compressive force this is an example but this is a case only if bilateral stand is balanced if you are leaning to one side the situation changes if you are leaning to the side the situation changes that's the changes that are happening in bilateral stands with that we wind up this session I thought to take the unilateral stance also but maybe we'll do it in the coming video so stay tuned just revise it once again do the problem do the calculations and just draw the diagram and study it is so simple if you read the text too so stay tuned once again thank you so much and if you like my video just hit the like button